Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. According to the American Heart Association, 70% of Americans can feel helpless to act during a cardiac emergency. This helplessness is often attributed to lack of education or knowledge. CPR can help provide victims the extra time needed to survive until emergency medical technicians arrive. My next guest, they're a duo who work together teaching people the skills and training necessary to assist someone who is drowning, suffocating, or choking for that matter. We're being joined by Doran Kemp and Joan Voltz of DNJ CPR Training. How are you guys? Real good. Great. Thank you both for being here. And last segment, our focus was on the Milwaukee Fire Department's community programs and services. And you two happen to be retired Milwaukee firemen. So, uh, so glad to have you here. Uh, if you would, for starters, just tell us a little bit more about your backgrounds. I worked for the fire department for 25 years. I first was an EMT and then I became a paramedic. Mm -hmm. And then I eventually got off into training the firefighters and the community. Okay, and what about you? Well, I was on the Milwaukee Fire Department. I started in 1983, but even prior to that, I was a Milwaukee County lifeguard. So I've been doing this since I was 17 years old. Wow. So um, yeah, I've been retired since 2001. Okay, so you guys, uh, I guess you're in, enjoying retirement, but it's just in you to uh, want to continue to educate people on helping save lives. And so when did you figure out that you wanted to come together and uh, provide training to the community? Early on in my career, I got involved with automated external defibrillators. Mm -hmm. This was a new device that was introduced to the fire department we found out that the earlier you got CPR, the earlier you got defibrillation, the better your chance for survival. We started having multiple persons surviving. So I trained firefighters like John and others how to use this equipment. Mm -hmm. And we felt like we needed to get this out to the community also. So we started working together to train people in first aid, CPR. Okay, and so talking about the defibrillators, I've seen so many news stories where uh, mostly like athletes who have no knowledge that they have any medical issues, they're maybe playing basketball and they collapse right there on the floor. And uh, there have been schools who had these uh, devices there on the premises and it really was the difference between life and death for these kids. Yes, it, it makes a world of difference. They say for every minute that goes by mm -hmm. that you don't get CPR and defibrillation, your chance for survival is dropping by 10%. Wow. So in Milwaukee, the fire department can usually get to you within three to five minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, if we do the math, now you're at 50-50. Mm. But if someone starts CPR and they have a defibrillator on site, they say your chance of survival is only dropping by 5%. So now those five minutes it took us to get there, you've got a 75% chance to survive. That's awesome. So the goal today is to emphasize the importance of being equipped with the knowledge that could potentially help save someone's life. So John, uh, when you look at all of the instances that you've had to use CPR, uh, was it a situation where you just clicked and you knew what to do? Or did you have to kind of practice in Tell yourself, you know, kind of go through the steps every now and then. Well, like I said, from lifeguarding to being on the fire department, it's just something we do all the time. Yeah. We do it all the time, and we work as a team together. Everyone has a role to play. So as long as uh, everyone knows what they're supposed to do, we go do the, we just do the job. We, we always want a positive outcome, of course, yeah. but it's not always possible to always get a positive outcome. But we're always there to give them the best chance to go back to their families. Yeah, there is this video that uh, just came out not too long ago of this dog, and he was uh, with the police officer, and it was a demonstration, and the dog was actually jumping up and down like he was performing CPR, and I'm like, if the dog can do it, us humans, yes. we have no excuses, right? <laughs> So you 
you guys are going to show us some tips today just really to give people a head start on realizing first that this is really uh, some simple steps to remember and really I guess the challenge is not panicking if in fact you notice that right. someone is in need. So we're going to uh, get busy and show everybody just how easy it is to perform CPR. Okay. Well, one of the things I'd like to say even before we actually show you how to do it is one of the barriers to people doing CPR is they felt like they'd have to do mouth to mouth. Mm -hmm. The American Heart Association has recently in the last few years come up with a campaign called Compressions Only or Hands Only CPR. Mm -hmm. So what we found through research was that even if you just do the compressions, don't even have to do the breaths, just do the compressions, people will have a better chance to survive. Okay, well, let's get busy, guys. All right. All right, guys, so we have Doran and John here who have set up a scenario for us to show us just how easy it is to uh, not only give CPR, but also use a defibrillator. So, uh, fellas, where are we on this? So, first things, make sure it's safe for you to help someone, mm -hmm. okay? So, imagine you found someone lying on the floor. What would be your natural reaction to do first? Uh, shake them. Are you okay? Hey, yes. are you okay? Yeah. Yes. So, now they don't wake up. Mm -hmm. What we want to do next is have someone call 911 and get the AED or defibrillator. Okay. I think it's important to uh, let the viewers know where would we find uh, one of these devices in public places. Yeah, like I said, they're in all the, all the schools, they're in the malls, they're at the airport, they're, 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 it's so casinos, you just ask, yeah, casinos. golf courses. Right. These okay. are some of the top five places where people have cardiac arrest outside the hospital. Okay, so it's important to realize that these are at those type of places Correct. and you tell somebody maybe to go get the device and in the meantime, what would I be doing? In the meantime, we want you to look to see if that person's breathing mm -hmm. or moving. Okay. Is the mannequin breathing or moving? No, not at all. <laughs> then <laughs> we should start CPR. Okay, so. so. Place your hand in the center of the chest with your okay. heel, lock out your elbows, and push down about 100 to 120 times per minute. You want to go fast and deep. So and you're doing fast very enough? good. Yes, fact, okay. you're going too fast. You can oh. slow down. Okay. Keep going, though. Keep going. When you get two green lights like you have right now, uh -huh. you're doing really good. Okay. So okay. let's imagine now that the AED has arrived. Okay. We want you to stop the CPR okay. and use the AED. Okay, so first thing that's important is turning it on, right? Yes, <laughs> if you remember that, you can do this. Right, so. Listen to it. Apply pads to patients. Let's do chest. that. Okay, put so there the are pads. Pads, connector the pads next to show you exactly where to put them. There's a little arrow. Okay, that, that there's indicates. one that goes right here above the yep. heart, and then there's another that goes right underneath. You want to put it on the Apply side pads. underneath their arm a little bit. Plan there you go, connector. perfect. Okay, and then it's telling me to plug in the connector. Yes, okay. very good. Okay, that's in there. Mm -hmm. And is it going to keep talking to me? Analyzing heart rhythm. Okay. Do not touch the patient. Yes, follow you, the prompts. What do they hear you on TV say? What do they say? Clear. Clear. Shock advised. Right. That's the only Charging. thing that's good on TV. <laughs> Stay clear of patient. Okay. Okay, so everybody clear I'm and it's advised me to Let's show the orange press button. Show me the orange button, button so they can see that. Yes, press okay. that button. Shock delivered. So the patient will kind of jerk a little bit, mm -hmm. but not much. Begin CPR. And right after the shock, you'd start CPR again. Okay, and do yes. the same thing. Same thing before. you were doing. Just keep pushing hard and fast. Fact, and I got my two green lights. Yes, therefore. that means you're doing it perfect. Yes. Two green lights. You're so going it is fast a rhythm. and deep. Okay. It's like the song Staying Alive. Huh? Ha, 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 ha. Staying alive. alive. Staying alive. Perfect. Uh, 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 Have you taken a class alive. before? No. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever done this before? I uh, know. See, that's how simple it is. I don't remember it is. ever doing it, so right. probably that's not. That's how simple it is. Yes. And, okay. And, and, and people should not be scared of doing it. And like Doran said earlier, if you don't want to do mouth to mouth on somebody because you may not have a barrier device to give mm -hmm. mouth to mouth, then you can do the Just compressions do the only. Compressions and so use I the guess AED. Uh, it is a scary situation it if is. you are performing this on someone who's not responding. But uh, how will you know if someone is uh, doing better or 
you know, or that you've done the right thing. Well, a lot of times you'll see like their lips will be turning blue. Mm -hmm. And then if that color comes back, that means at least you're circulating their blood properly. But they'll either, they'll, they'll either start breathing on their own or you just wait for the paramedics or the okay. EMTs on the fire department to show up and they'll, they'll take over from there. Do you keep pressing until the paramedics yes. get there? Yes, yes. Okay. don't stop. And if you get tired, have somebody else do it. And, you know, when you get tired. Yeah, we recommend if, if someone's around, try and switch about every two minutes. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is keep doing it until that person starts moving or breathing and they grab your arm and say, stop. Okay, okay. <laughs> They're like, go. okay, we're right. good. good. So good. Uh, this is all really um, life-saving information. So if somebody wants to uh, really get involved with a training group or join a group, what do they do? Kind the nice thing on. is we will come to your location we have classes at St. Joseph's Hospital through Ascension. Okay. We teach not only basic, but advanced courses, first aid. We teach the public. We teach healthcare professionals. So we've designed this course that we can basically do it in three hours. Stop CPR. Our two okay. minutes is up. <laughs> okay. Let me turn Analyzing it heart rhythm. Listen to it. Let's shock one more Stay time. Stay clear of patient. Okay. Shock advised. I'm clear. Okay, everyone's clear. clear, and we're waiting for the prompt, the red lights to come on, right? Deliver shock now. The, there red we go. shock delivered. And then we'll start CPR. Yeah. Okay, and I'll do it one Begin once CPR. again. All right. So we teach, we teach doctors, nurses, mm -hmm. firefighters, paramedics. We also teach daycare centers. We go to factories. We go. Uh, we work first, second, third shift. We'll go in anywhere, anytime. Yes. and teach CPR. Yes. Okay, well I had my green lights, so that lets me great. know that that yes. was You uh, gave that a person a great chance. <laughs> well, no, we thank you so much for coming by You're because welcome. this is uh, important information. Like you said, really easy for people to remember. So we just wanted to emphasize that today. Thank you both for You're your very time. Uh, Doran Kemp and John Boltz, they're from D&J CPR Training. You can give them a call for more information at 414-839-9189 or 414-223. 3181 and that's going to do it for today's show. I'm your host Andrea Williams as always. I thank you so much for watching and we do hope you join us again next week as we take another look at our issues Milwaukee. Have a great day.